I'm Jill Strange, and I'm in the sesh. Yeah! Today in the sesh. Jill Strange. Recorded live at the garage in Deerfield, Illinois.
Jill Strange, welcome. We oh, uh, thank appreciate you. For you. Me. Oh, it's our pleasure. Appreciate you joining us here in the sesh in the garage, the McNulty gar- garage. We can thank our hosts, the McNulty's, for having us out once again. You know, I, I think about musicians and all the many musicians that I've interviewed over the years. There've been a ton of them over the last thirty years, and we inevitably we talk about them and their childhood and how they were sort of influenced to become musicians and their parents kind of, you know, making them do piano lessons and, and violin or, the, or, or maybe their parents were musicians themselves. Um, this is a little different though, DJing. Was, was your mom some sort of master DJ <laughs> back in the day and you kind of took it from there or how did you become involved in well, this? Well, I mean, what happened was I was never really interested in music. I, I mean, I had a few favorites. My dad always listened to Sam Cooke and the Beatles and so I would always listen to that whenever we were driving. But my mom is a fitness instructor. So in the 90s, she'd be listening to all this like Chicago house and like, you know, really upbeat, like 130 BPM house music. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And it's just like, subconsciously it sat in there until I was in high school and I was kind of reintroduced to electronic music and underground culture, you know, underground music culture. So, and that's where I really started, the ball started rolling and I just collected more and more and more of what I found interesting. So your mom actually did have some influence in you going Very much, and she's in the audience out there. Right, mom. Hey, Mom. Welcome. <laughs> Yay for Mom! <laughs> <laughs> so we, all, the, we all have them. Yeah. So. so for the past eight years, you've been DJing and producing? Yes. Yeah, about eight now. Yeah, I, th- I started when I was a junior in high school. I went to Columbia College when I was still in high school to learn how to DJ. And then um, it took three years to convince my parents to loan the, me a few bucks to buy <laughs> very expensive DJ equipment that they were, you know, for good reasons, kind of reserved on letting me get. So, mm. um, And I finally got it, and I was able to practice. And you paid finally, off? Yeah, paid off. <laughs> can, can we talk a little bit about DJing and, 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 what, and what it is. I, mean, I have a okay. whole different idea of what yeah. that is. Yeah. You know, I, I was a DJ when did. I was, you know, in, in high school, but that was, you know, playing uh, the Beatles over here. And mm-hmm. as soon as that song was over on that turntable, I'd start this turntable over here. It's much different than that, correct? I mean, if you could explain the art of, of DJing. Yeah, and I mean, well, yeah, because, I mean, there are the radio DJs, you know, and then we have club DJs, which, you know, I feel like you have to explain to a lot of people because whenever I say I'm a DJ, you know, they're like, oh, radio? And oh, I'm like, what radio station yeah, are yeah, exactly. And I'm like, oh, no, I, I play in like clubs. And um, so I have to explain to them what I do. And it's more keeping the energy up or creating a vibe and, um, and showing, I mean, and then like a radio DJ, you're showing people new music, or at least that's what I think a DJ should do. And there's different styles of DJing too. So, I mean, there's this turntablism where you're scratching and you're, you know, chopping up tracks. And then there's house DJing, which is, creating this vibe, this overall vibe for maybe an hour or so. And, um, and then there's like, now we have like festival trap and, you know, all this like really hard hitting, you know, festival music, which is more being up here for an hour rather than roller coaster ride. So <laughs> there's and, different and, kinds. And of those, of those kinds of, of DJing, mm-hmm. where do you fall? I definitely fall into like the very classic Chicago house vibe of creating a mood and kind of, you know, taking the audience on a, on a journey of like ups and downs. Like, you know, so there's, there's some breaks in there and then you know, we're up here high in the energy and, you know, just back and forth. So when you're, when you're putting together a mix, is that correct? Is, <laughs> is that the correct term? A mix of music. Where do you, where does that, that music come from? And when you put it together, is is that is is it more of an improv style, or are you actually do you come prepared with a uh, with with a planned out sort of mix of music? Um, well, I, for where I get my music from, I, I have a I have very weird taste. <laughs> I'm all over the place. I love all different kinds of music, but I try to cr- I try to keep it into one one vibe, I guess. And I hate saying that, but. Um, (laughs) and you know, one kind of, it all molds together when it gets played as a whole set. So, um, then what I do is put maybe when I'm preparing for a club gig, I put maybe a hundred tracks into, uh, like a playlist. And then when I'm at the club, then I'm choosing, you know, maybe mixing it while you're at the mixing at the club. And then I'm going through my playlist, you know, reading off the audience, seeing like what, Oh, what track will, you know, be great after this one. And, you know, I should bring this one in. And so I usually have a starting a base to, you know, start from. That's so, interesting. So you it, you are sort of working for the crowd. You're sort of everything. The, what you, what you play and how you play it is determined essentially by the room and the crowd and 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 how they're 
they're reacting to yeah. you at that time? For sure. I mean, you know, if, uh, you know, I want to keep a mood going and everyone's having a good time and reacting well to a certain kind of music, I'll keep it going for a little bit longer and then I'll try switching it up to maybe something more soulful or something, you know, maybe with a slow a set. Bit, yeah, or slow set, maybe like ballroom <laughs> dancing. Or, oh, really? <laughs> I always try throwing something weird in there. I uh, usually end a set with something either not electronic or something very classic. Um, because it sticks with people. Give me an example. What do you? Um, I've ended my sets with, um, I think some '90s kids will know the ending song from uh, Good Burger with uh, Keenan and Cal, and it's um, "I'm a Dude, You're a Dude, We're All Dudes." So um, <laughs> that for, for that kind of a crowd, I do that, and uh, I've op- I usually open with Space Jam if I'm uh, doing kind of a wide range audience because everyone loves Space Jam. <laughs> right, right. So in the in the world of what you do, how many uh, others out there? How many girls are doing this um i mean i think i think a lot of women are djing but we're yeah. not seen i mean you don't really see a lot of women because we're not getting booked only two percent two percent of um festivals are women on average okay uh so right now there's a movement um led by my favorite djs anna luno and nina las vegas nina kravitz um louisa uh, these famous female DJs to get more women on the scene because they are making this great music, but no one's paying attention.
Best college DJ two years in a row. Yeah, uh, best college DJ in Chicago for two years in a row. It gets kind of convoluted. And then I was the best college DJ in the Northwest of North America in 2015. And then um, and then I came in second place for two years in the nation, which is its own story. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, impressive, though. Well, thank you. And so yeah, I just came back from uh, the organization. Just gave me the title of best college DJ and producer in the country for 2015. So right. that's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's thank probably you. that's probably thank the uh, perfect time to toast that. Yeah, so exactly. Congratulations oh, on that. We found thank out that you. you're a f- you're a fan of whiskey sours. Or yes. Or How is it? Is it good? Or? This is a good whiskey sour. Because you know, we, we can we can fire these. Yeah. Thank you, bartenders. These bartenders <laughs> so where's this uh, contest? Where does it take place? Uh, it's nationwide. Okay. So they come to do regionals, and then they pick out the best DJs from each region, and then there's semifinals, and they bring you know, DJs from certain, certain parts of the country into, like, L.A. or New York, and then they'll say, battle it out. you get to travel with it? Yeah, yeah, I got to go to um, L.A., San Francisco, and Phoenix. For That's pretty game. nice. Is it, is it uh, nice. a panel of judges that judge you? Is it, is it from, the gr- from the crowd? Is it, how, um, how do they Well, uh, yeah, they, uh, they do have kind of, they take in consideration the crowd, but it's usually a panel of celebrity DJs. Okay. So um, from each region, uh, they have, you know, or sometimes Grammy winners or radio station DJs or um, anyone in the music business, but it's usually like a celebrity panel. And are these all DJs that you know? Oh, uh, sometimes, sometimes not. I mean, I'm not, I don't know a lot about like mainstream okay. electronic music. So <laughs> sometimes I'm like, oh, who is that? And all the other DJs are like, oh, can you believe that yeah, they right. got this person? I'm like, I don't know. Um, it's almost better, don't you think, to not know? Yeah, I yeah, think it is, and you're nervous. less nervous. Yeah. But then uh, for the 2014 uh, season, they had Lupe Fiasco um, from Chicago, and uh, they had uh, Mac J and Flaxo and uh, JCO in de- DJing. So if anyone knows those people, then yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got the feeling that you were absolutely the crowd favorite 
and the crowd yeah. was behind you and really maybe not too happy that you took second and not first. Yeah, right? uh, the winning DJ did get booed. Oh, and, yeah. wow. <laughs> um, and I felt, I, felt, I felt bad for him because he didn't deserve to get booed. But, um, but yeah, I had hundreds of people come up to me afterwards and little girls, you know, with their moms saying, girl power. And I was <laughs> like, so cool. I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, that's, you know, I, that, I was not expecting that reaction. And um, people really were rooting for me. So. so any idea, I mean, when you, when you look back and you, you think about that, you think about, mm -hmm. okay, here's your second place, you have the first place winner here, you think about his set and your set, I mean, wh what do you think the difference was in, in the judge's eyes in, 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 you know, between you and why he sort of might, might have edged you out in that competition? Yeah, um, <laughs> well, they, I mean, I was taken aside and told what the votes were, and for the first round, which I got through, I was 15 points above the next highest scoring DJ, which was, it's, it's a big jump. Um, I think it's on a scale of 30, so that it was a big one. Uh, and so for the second round, you know, I went in feeling pretty good. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I've, I, I was 15 points ahead of this guy. So, and I went in and I did, um, well actually, gotta back it up for a second, right before I went on, um, because it's on uh, national, you know, it's on ESPN, um, the Disney parent company was unhappy with a song that I played. And I was told oh, to keep it radio friendly, which I did. <laughs> but the context of the song, it, it was um, like a very goofy juke track, and it had the words, take off your G-string in it. And it was very that goofy. That is not very, Disney yeah. friendly and, at all. Yeah, and but they were, but it was, but they never said that. You know, they just said radio friendly. Right. So I was like, okay, yeah, that would fly. And um, <laughs> so I got berated before I really? went on for my second set. Right before I went on, and I was like, oh my god, I've got a song in there with the word "damn" in it. Are they going <laughs> to cut me off? Because they said if you have anything, we're cutting you off, and you're leaving the competition. That that put you right at ease. Didn't yeah, it? and yeah. I'm, so I'm up there like, oh, yeah, oh, right. you know. And, Oh, oh no, and I had to drop, I had to take out a track because I was worried that they would cut me off. So um, I, it, it was just a bad situation for me going into the second round. They were going to announce the winner and uh, they did the thing where it's like, is it Jill? Is it this DJ? And then mm -hmm. the crowd, you know, would, you know, I don't want to be vain, but the crowd like roared for me and there was kind of crickets for the na other DJ. <laughs> <laughs> And then, um, and you know, crickets, right? <laughs> that's and Disney. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> All right. And I was the kind of, you know, I was hoping that I'd be called, and they called the other DJ, and he got booed. Yeah. So that's wild. Yeah. So. Well, at least you had that, right? Yeah, I got, it. I got the, yeah, I got the. Yeah, I got the. Come on, second. And you're here, and, and I'm here is, now. Is, you're yeah, here you're now. in the sesh. How about that? Mm -hmm. If if I can ask a, a little bit about um, once you're on the road and you're DJing and you're 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 going from show to show, um, are are there are there is there a circuit that that DJs work, or are you are you hired on by by clubs exclusively, or uh, what, what are the avenues for you? you know? I mean, there's so many. It's it's kind of a weird. It's a weird industry. It's either um, you got a lot of good friends around the country that are willing to book you in your clubs, um, or you're signed on to a label uh, and have sold a bunch of tracks, you know, and people know you um, by your name and they want to see you, uh, or you know, or this, they need an opener, so you're, you know, you can fill in. There's all mm. different kinds of ways to play out. But right now, I'm would be happy with just playing uh, in clubs mm -hmm. and um, maybe just doing like local kind of festivals would be cool. But I'm not, you know, I don't have a name to put on a billboard yet. So, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it'll happen soon. We're very excited to hear you perform. Very excited. Oh, okay. So we're looking forward to doing that right now. So, Jill Strange, thank you. And oh, thank you. To thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you.
Sesh is produced by Jamie Lombardi, Tommy Lee Johnston, and Brandy Johnston. Audio coordinated by Craig Leininger and video coordinated by Samuel Johnston. Social media coordinated by Nicole Johnston. Music by Pitchy and the 44s. Special thanks to Tom and Bonnie McNulty, Trillium Productions, as well as our production assistant, Mark Sinkus. The Sesh was created by Nicole Johnston, Samuel Johnston, Tommy Lee Johnston, Craig Leininger, and Jamie Lombardi. For more Jill Strange, follow the links in the bio. To subscribe to the Sesh YouTube channel and SoundCloud for more episodes, visit our website, www.seshmusic.com. Marine high to dive into and swim for a dream. I pictured my hand on a way and thought about the taste of the pomegranate lips, the pomegranate.